Hello and welcome to another edition of Community Forum. My name is Joseph Feaster, I'm the host of the program. And as you know, we always have exciting programs here on Community Forum. But today is somewhat special to me because I have all of my good friends, some of which I've just met recently, but nonetheless, we're talking about a, uh, an institution within any community which provides for the vibrancy uh, and the life of every community, and that, was, that is our schools. And today I'm fortunate to have with me an assembly of persons, well, one, my good friend, the superintendent, and also the principal of, this, um, of the high school, but there are three other persons who I've just met today, so I want to introduce them to you in case you don't know them as well. And of course, I'm going to start immediately to my right, my uh, good friend, the superintendent of the schools, Marguerite Maggie Rizzi. Next to her is Julie Miller, who is the principal at the Stoughton High School. Uh, next to Julie is Terry Fleming. She is the 6 to 12 STEM coordinator, and they, she's at the middle and the high school. Next to Terry is Jamie Holbig. Uh, she is the pre-K to 5 STEM coordinator, who she's at the elementary school and the preschool. And next to her is Eileen Sprague. She's at the uh, uh, pre-K uh, uh, pre to 5. Mm -hmm. um, Humanities Coordinator, and she's at the preschool and elementary school. So I want to say welcome to you, you all. I've never had such a big crowd, so I'm excited. <laughs> you know, I, uh, this may be as many as I have in the audience most times, but nonetheless, uh, <laughs> nonetheless, we're going to have our time to explore a number of different things because, as I said at the outset, I think our schools are an important of, uh, for the fabric of any community, and I want to hear exactly, and for our viewing audience to hear exactly what's going on at our school. So, Superintendent, with that, what's going on? Well, there are always a lot of exciting things going on. We have a big system. Um, we have over 3,800 students. We have a big high school, middle school, uh, five elementary schools, and a very vibrant preschool program. And um, we're always adding to that to address the needs of different parts of our population. Um, so I asked some of these folks to come with me today to talk about some of the things that we're doing academically because, um, as we know, Stoughton has, um, th there are certain communities in the state of Massachusetts that are extremely affluent and those communities tend to do um, very, very well on standardized tests, some of the assessment systems that we have. Um, Stoughton does quite well on those things um, given that there aren't some of the advantages some of those very wealthy communities have. And we've done a lot of thinking to come up with things that are innovative, that are particularly geared towards our population, that we can help students who are struggling and also provide a lot of enrichment opportunities for students who are ready for those things. And oftentimes, those students are the same kids. So um, we don't want to put them in categories of one or the other. So we've done a lot um, to address those things we have um, a big commitment to um, helping students avoid dropping out and the process of keeping students in school begins a long time before the 10th, 11th, or 12th grade when they drop out. And so we've done some things at all different grade levels, including ninth <coughs> grade, to address that need because we know kids when they graduate from high school do so much better than students who don't. And we also have an extremely exciting building project going on, massive project, biggest project the town has probably ever embarked on, and that's going to give us um, opportunities to do things at the high school level that um, our teachers do an amazing job when you look at the rating of the school in the state with what they have, uh, but with what they'll be able to have in September of 19 when the building opens, um, it's just going to give them an entire new range of possibilities in so many areas. Uh, so I brought some of the folks who can talk specifically about some of those issues, uh, but every day we're moving forward. We've just provided a, a budget draft to the school committee. We did that on Tuesday night uh, to move forward some of these programs that I'm talking about, to keep all the things that we have in place, uh, and that, that process is underway now for the next um, five or six weeks or so. I love doing a program with you. I could just take off the mic, go sit in the audience, <laughs> and just let you go on because you encompass so many things in here. And, you know, I was almost going to shift some of the ways in which I want to present it. But I think that 
Um, I do want to start with the building. I was going to go mm -hmm. straight to the curricula, but the reality is I want to, we'll, we'll explore that in depth. But I want to, you know, Julie, I know that, that it's going to be your house. It is. <laughs> when it's completed, I've been by, I'm, I, you know, I've seen some of the reports, I've watched on TV to get a sense where things are. Mm -hmm. And I, so why don't you talk about the building project, where it is, uh, once again, tell folks when it's when the school is planning to go into its uh, high school is planning to go into its new building and what's going on. Sure, I would love to. Uh, it's been an exciting process that we've undergone. Uh, every day, I get to go out and I stand on the D second landing of the building and watch the project unfolding because they're building the new high school right in our backyard on our football fields, tracks, and track in um, where tennis courts used to be. Um, it's an amazing process to watch um, as. The high school principal as well as a member of the building committee, I had two major concerns when we were selecting companies for the project. And <coughs> one was to minimize disruption to the learning environment while the project was going on and the other was maximizing the learning both during the project and at the completion of the project in the new building. And the two companies that we've selected, Com Compass Project Management and Consigli, are fulfilling their promises that they've made to us in both of those arenas. So um, the disruption during the school day really has been minimized. I meet with them on a weekly basis uh, every Wednesday to discuss the project, to find out what's coming up in the schedule. Um, they're very uh, amenable to making our schedule work with theirs. So they have all of our important dates built into their building schedule so that they can avoid things like MCAS dates, PSAT dates, those kinds of things, so that the noise is to a limit. They've been really excellent in terms of working with us and safety and security of the the property during this time. Um, so those pieces have really been very smooth and as of right now, uh, we are definitely on schedule, knock on wood. Um, and and when is just, uh, when is the expectation to have the building turned over for occupancy? Yes, so in the spring of 2019, they'll finish construction. So in the summer of 2019, we will move into the new high school building and open our doors September 2019 to a brand new building. All right. Yeah, and that brand new building is, is truly going to be quite an amazing uh, product. Uh, we have really taken a great deal of time speaking to all the different <coughs> constituents, you know, students, staff, um, community members, um, business owners, all the different partners to talk about what we really want our building to look like. And I think that we really have a plan that's going to accommodate all of those needs. It's a very flexible space. Um, it's a compact um, um, footprint. Uh, it allows us to separate the building from academic spaces to those spaces that would be used more in the evening, which hel helps us secure the property. But beyond that, it's going to bring a black box theater to our students, um, a, a state-of-the-art auditorium, a state-of-the-art TV studio, um, great facilities that are going to be very flexible, uh, collaboration spaces for both teachers and for students. There's a great deal that's going to happen in that new building. Uh, we are building uh, brand new science labs in this building that will take what we have now, which are subpar, um, to you know, 21st century and beyond uh, for learning for our STEM programs, which are really bursting right now at Stoughton High School. We, are, uh, we have a huge interest in the, the STEM um, fields, so kids are really eager to take those, so we'll see a lot of growth there and the opportunity to do so in the new high school building as well, as well as the growth of our theater program, um, which is a real um, desire of our students and our community it, it too. So uh, the project is really quite amazing and it's wonderful to have been a part of the whole process and to be able to watch it unfold every day is, is great. Well, you know, you all are good because you gave me a segue right to, uh, you know, I listen very intently when it's going on, but before I do uh, go to Terry, I want to be able to at least, I would like for you to tell, having a physical building, a new physical plant has a way of, um, if you will, enhancing a number of different aspects. It could be in terms of the recruitment of students, it could be what do you see, beside the academics that will be going on, what does this new building represent to you as to what advantages it will give for the community of Stoughton? Yeah, so first of all, it will give great uh, spaces for the community to be able to use. Uh, our building is used pretty much 24 hours, um, so it will give really wonderful opportunity for the community to get into the building and, and use it for a variety of purposes, including some of our athletic and uh, uh, PE spaces. So. 
um, we have a lot of opportunity there. But I do think that we'll see um, more families moving into Stoughton who want to take advantage of a state-of-the-art building and program. Um, we already have the state-of-the-art program, now we'll have the building that goes with it. Um, and so we'll see more families that want to move in. You might see more students decide to select um, Stoughton High School as the high school of choice rather than some of the other options that they might have in terms of private or um, regional schools, vocational schools. Um, so I anticipate that we'll keep more of those students in our system as well. All right. Well, that was almost the response I expected that it would do, and I'm thank you. You've uh, you know you've definitely uh, been consistent with that, and I you know wish the system and you all the best uh, as towards that uh, 2019 opening. Thank you. But again, as we talk about, yes, you can have a physical plant, but the real issue in an academic setting or any place is what's going on within that physical plant. And I know the three of you, and we'll talk about it in, in succession, but I'm going to start with uh, the high school and middle school, and that's with you, Terry. I know you're the STEM coordinator, and I think what you would probably please tell our viewing audience, because many may not know, I know, but many of our viewing audience may not know what the acronym STEM stands for. So start there and then t tell them what you do and how you will enhance that activity in the science, technology, engineering, and whatever the uh, mathematics. <laughs> mathematics, the, yeah. okay. <laughs> So STEM does stand for science, yeah. technology, engineering, and mathematics. And I get the fantastic job of working with all of our staff at the middle school and high school um, building a program that is flexible and allows for students to explore options to be career ready and college ready for when they um, graduate. So one of the benefits of the new program is the fact that we have been building our engineering program within the classroom and our science department is really um, trying to make a diverse uh, opportunities for the kids so it's not just a traditional pathway of biology, chemistry, physics. The kids are getting to take astronomy and green engineering and robotics and the new facility allows us to really branch out and make that open options for the kids after they take the biology MCAS they can start to explore different things. Um, I just went to a conference and we started talking about chemistry, green chemistry. So mm -hmm. the, the need for um, having the, the the up-to-date materials and technology in the classrooms is so vital to the kids' success. We don't know what they're going to be doing and what needs are um, out there, but we want to prepare them for those. Let me just, uh, again, I always, in, on, my, on my programs, to try and make sure we educate the viewing audience who may not know. So, okay, we're going to have the STEM program. We're going to be talking about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. That's great. What does that mean in terms of career opportunities, mm -hmm. advancing on to college? What, what, what is the preparation here? And I, I know when I get to, to Jamie, we're going to be talking about the little guys mm -hmm. and little gals in there and how we're preparing them. But for you, you're looking at that cohort in terms of the middle school and the high school, and particularly the high school is moving on to college uh, and or careers. What, the, what is the possible pathway for persons who are in this curriculum? Well, the pathways actually are so um, un unlimited right now for the kids. We're really trying to get the students to realize that the thinking that they're doing in their math classes actually apply to the engineering components that they're discovering and building on in their robotics or engineering or physics classes. Um, so when we'll, some of the work that we have been doing for the past two years is really breaking down those thoughts and those walls that a classroom, once you learn in one class, you're done learning and you need to just go on to the next. So we're trying to decompartmentalize some of the learning and the pathways for these kids are engineering their um, and that's mechanical engineering that's electrical engineering that's any engineering which um, is so it's so finite it's like getting a doctorate you know you can be a doctor in many different areas so well they, you know I have some familiarity uh, 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 I'm a northeastern guy uh, not <laughs> no math and engineering was not my forte <laughs> so but I, uh, some of the deans and the associate deans over at the engineering school, I know, and he's one who's directly involved with the STEM program uh, as well. So I'm f least familiar with some of the, and, and the areas you point out is, and the opportunities are expanding as we speak uh, in so many different ways. And I guess cyber gets into there as well as some of the conversations around the cyber issues. Mm -hmm. 
But I'm always intrigued. My wife is a middle school teacher, and I'm always, you know, but I'm always, I'm really interested how you're able to do this, uh, Jamie, with the pre-K uh, uh, the, uh, the five in terms <laughs> yeah. of the get them. I see you have something on there, maybe, uh, you know, that, so we can talk about <laughs> that, too. Talk about how you're doing it at that level, because we're talking yeah. about the, the little guys and gals, uh, oh, the yeah. elementary and the pre-K. So how yes. do you uh, adapt the STEM uh, curricula to, to them? Um, well, one of the big goals that Dr. Rizzi has is to have a robotics curriculum that carries into the elementary school. So my job is really to help Dr. Rizzi reach her goals. So one of the things that we really focused on was how can we bring robotics into elementary so that coding and coding is the language of the future and we did a really nice job bringing some amazing products into our technology classrooms so the students will once a week visit their technology class it used to be a computer class so they were learning how to you know type on the computer and all the basic word processing skills can i come but now absolutely <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> Oh, did you? I thought you said comment. I thought you said, oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I come? No, 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 I want to come um, to sorry. the class. So now that all of our elementary classrooms are one-to-one, -one, meaning okay. they all have either an iPad or a Chromebook in the classroom, we see a lot of those skills being taught right in the regular classroom. So that shifted our focus of the technology class a little bit. So now we can use some of our B-Bots and our ProBots and our Dash and Dot materials that the students are doing some of that computational thinking and that algorithmic thinking in their technology class. But we also took it a step further and um, we have a great partnership with Lego and they have done a lot of work with us and we've done a lot, lot of things for them. and. Um, they have a product called the WeDo 2.0 and it partners with the science curriculum. So while the regular education teacher is teaching the science content, the, they're also able to build something using their engineering skills and they're also able to program it so they're using their coding skills and this is just one project that the third graders worked on um, last week All right. so they learn about force and motion and this is an object that's going to pull something so it's applying yeah. a force can, it, can, can you turn it, um, is, is it I can turn it, turn it on, on I can't now because I don't have a device to oh, control okay. it okay. but I can program it and one uh -huh. of the projects that our um, third graders worked with is they had to take this basic project that they built and they had to modify it so they you know explored different types of wheels they explored different axles they applied different weight and mass to it's making it heavier and seeing how that would impact its ability to pull something and then they actually went against another team's robot and then they did a tug of war contest oh, so okay. after they saw which robot was stronger then they had the ability to modify it again and um, we're continuing to work on that, trying again, and what, are, what did you learn from that experience? And some of them didn't move at all, so oops, we have a mistake, how can we find that mistake? So we're really doing a lot of that type and of thinking. And they're doing that thinking. in pre-K to, there, to We have, um, this product in particular, we have starting in our second grade classrooms. Okay. Um, in our pre-K, we just, um, <clears throat> in our relationship with Lego, they just released a new product last week, it just went out to the market, and they asked if our um, preschool students would pilot this product for them so they sent in their team from Denmark they flew in and they actually did a photo shoot at our wow. Jones preschool okay. so they got the op they had the opportunity to use their um, products with our preschool students and they have this amusement park and some of the rides were broken and the children had to try to figure out how to put them back together and they have gears and they have pulleys and um, the kids were building and uh, you know some kids kind of went off on their own and built their their own and they have a lot of visuals so if you need that guided um, mm -hmm. assistance for our preschoolers but um, I know one thing they all had fun and they were all building and they're they're learning those skills that they're going to need when they get into the elementary and when they get into the middle school so it's and really exciting mm -hmm. um, I think these guys are fantastic and I love every day they're always thinking of new things to do and um, they bring exciting things to the kids, and one of the uh, you mentioned, you know, maybe engineering was not your thing. Certainly, actually, uh, not mine either when I was in school. Uh, and we want kids to have all kinds of career opportunities and to be incredibly competitive. 
in the professions where um, there are good careers to be had. But it's not just that. In addition to the new things that are considered 21st century skills, there are a lot of old-fashioned things that are really important. And even if you decide never to be an engineer, even if, say, you're going to be a journalist or an attorney or uh, any of the number of professions where you wouldn't necessarily use these things to uh, be part of your career, when they say uh, education isn't rocket science, it's much harder than that. It's because developing children's brains and the way they think. So if you learn to understand how these things work, how you put things together, how you would work with a group of people on a problem, how you would do an analysis of what went wrong and fix it, you can use those skills in any profession. And if you understand how computers work, what coding means, in any profession we have to use these tools. So our students could either be passive, uh, users who don't understand what's going on underneath, or they can be people who understand the workings of everything that they use, even if they don't become, say, professional programmers or engineers. Well, I was looking at that device. We could use that in the lore and some of the trials oh, yeah. that we have. <laughs> uh, we could definitely use that uh, that tug of war uh, uh, metaphor uh, um, in some. So some things are, are mm. applicable in other uh, disciplines, but. I, I'm going to use a terminology may be incorrect. That's the hard scientist, and now we want to go to the softer side of the humanities, which will get into how people feel, think, and do. Not to say that engineers and aren't that particular way, but in terms of the sciences, are you pretty well direct now? You all you educators can correct me if I'm wrong. This is the old school Catholic school way mm. that I may have learned. But coming to the humanities with you, Eileen, you again are dealing with our little folks, pre-K mm -hmm. to five. Uh, talk about what things you cover with these young folk, and uh, again, I see you have books, and that takes us to another uh, dimension. So why don't you let our audience know what you do and how how it's applicable? Sure, absolutely. I can actually segue from the Legos as well because Jamie and I work very closely because our model, of course, pre-K and elementary is all interdisciplinary. Um, the students are reading about um, the science and alongside doing some of these engineering project projects as well. At the preschool level, we actually have a product that deals with a social-emotional piece, and it's through Lego that they're building and learning about their uh, a more awareness about their selves. Um, so that's kind of a nice um, transition from some of the Lego and engineering. Um, we worked with our preschool and, our, and the Lego um, just the other day to have them build how they were feeling and they have little Lego faces and they can see um, their emotions and then also express those emotions. So I think that's a big piece that we're seeing within our curriculum that we're trying to explore and provide more opportunities for our students to develop those social emotional needs that um, they need also to be part of that college and career ready community that we're talking about. They need to be able to work collaboratively and um, persevere and have that growth mindset. Um, so a big push for our curriculum for language arts has been including some of those social emotional pieces as well and providing the opportunity to develop those pieces within the classroom and within the community of that classroom. So just to be a little bit more specific, mm -hmm, sure. just give an example because I think, you know, I have a sense of what those humanities are, but I'm not sure the viewing audience knows. Just give an example of a particular lesson. Sure, actually that's a great segue, because yeah. I, I actually brought two um, of our new curriculum novels that were introduced this year. Um, Fish in a Tree was for our fourth grade um, classrooms, and this is a new unit that we developed around social emotional learning, and then this is the wonder text that is in the fifth grade classroom. So the whole class is reading these novels together, and together they're talking about some of the issues that arise throughout these novels and celebrating the diversity of the characters in those novels. So they're analyzing the characters and they're thinking about how those characters are feeling and taking on their perspective. So that is really important um, now in our community, in our world, in our culture to understand understand how others think, others feel, and how you can embrace others' perspectives, but also then talk about your perspective and um, have those conversations collaboratively within the classroom. Um, so we're kind of scaffolding that and increasing awareness for some of the diverse elements and diverse populations that are coming into our communities, into our world, um, but also highlighting and celebrating 
um, differences in everyone. Um, so this um, book, Fish in a Tree, if anyone has not read it, I highly recommend it. It's about um, the main character has dyslexia um, and the struggles that she faces in school and how she perseveres and how she um, meets a teacher who really changes her life and sees her how she wants to be seen. So um, one of the main quotes from this is the Albert Einstein, if you um, ask a fish to climb a tree, they won't be successful. So introducing these novels and these messages to our students is that not everyone learns the same way. Everyone is different um, and everyone can be successful. It's about finding your passion and finding how you can um, grow and learn the way that your style presents for you. Um, so I know Stoughton really celebrates finding um, diverse um, curriculum opportunities for our students, but also then op offering differentiation for our students based off of where they are and meeting them where the students need. So another great um, opportunity that we've been able to provide this last year to all of our elementary schools is we just got a brand new K through three leveled book room. Um, and what that means is that um, every school has 4,080 texts at various levels that students can actually um, put their hands on those books and explore and develop that love for reading um, so that they're able to do all of these things that we're translating up through high school. Um, so that was another wonderful addition to our, our opportunities that we had this year. You know, the, the, the good thing about doing a program such as this is as much as I may interact with their superintendent or come by the high school, I don't have children in the schools, I would gather to say that 90% of the people in our community have no idea. Maybe the parents who are, have mm -hmm. students in the school may know some of it. They don't know all of it. A program like this allows you to be able to inform folks about the good things that are happening. And, and uh, I was going to, I still am going to do it. Uh, there's an address on Pennsylvania Avenue that I think we want to send that, those books to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I'll say about that. Um, but I do want to pivot because that's the new lexicon that they have here. I want to pivot because I'm going to come back to you, Superintendent, because we've talked about the building. We've talked about the overarching issues that are affecting the system. We've talked about the curricular in, in many different ways in terms of where you're trying to enhance that. We talked about what having both a physical structure, the academic programs, where you're taking the, the system will enhance the possibility of persons who, who find Stoughton's system more attractive, which enhances the community, which brings it in, which addresses the tax base, and all of the, you know, on and on and on. There's all the benefits to it. But again, what I want, you know, but there are certain, there's three issues that I want to, and however, whether you want to take it or, or have others speak to it. I always hear the conversation about the standing, and we know that, I know, that the, there was a recent change in the MCAS test, which had a uh, deleterious effect on a number of communities because they went down, and I've seen the arguments pro and con about whether this test is helpful or not, mm -hmm. et cetera. And uh, you know, I understand the issues that come up about the biases in the test, et cetera. And then the other one, which you know is a great concern to me, is, on, is, is in terms of special needs program. When my wife teaches, special needs in the middle school in Boston system, but more importantly, personally, are the issues in terms of mental health and those types of issues. Mm -hmm. Can you speak to both of those standing, the recent MCAS, if you have a position on it, and the question of how is the system addressing students with special needs? I know you mentioned it in, in yours, uh, in what you said, Eileen, but mm -hmm. again, how is the system addressing that? So this um, is, there are, this is something that we cope with um, all the time, and there has been a lot of changing. Uh, the landscape has changed a great deal um, in terms of standardized testing over the last few years. So um, there are some different <coughs> things to think about as far as that's concerned. So this, the newest test scores we have, we haven't really had a chance to dig into them and see exactly what they tell us. Uh, what we use them for um, when we get the scores is we sit down with our data specialist and with the curriculum folks and with the principals and then with all the teachers who are now very, very skilled at doing this. And we look at what, um, what kinds of errors were there? What sorts of things do the students indicate through their tests that they understand or don't understand? If there are things that they don't understand and it's a one-off thing, then that's something to deal with an individual student. If we see that there's an area where, 
ooh, the home fourth grade is struggling. Well, then we change what we're doing in that particular area to address that. So for this newest set of scores, we haven't had a chance to do that yet. Um, I will say that a couple of years ago, we went to a reading curriculum that was designed here in Stoughton, and we saw a, a very significant jump mm -hmm. in our reading scores as compared to the state of Massachusetts. And because the, it's a state test and it's on a curve, which means that there is always going to be a built-in set of schools that fail, and I have my issues about whether that's actually a good plan or not, um, but we want to always be in the right place in terms of how well we're doing as compared to other people in Massachusetts. So given our per pupil expenditure, given the um, income level of the uh, students who come into our system, um, we do very, very well in, in our measures across the state. We have at this point three and have had four level one schools at the same time. This year's testing- Better than the other community that starts with an S. Yes. Yeah, I thought so. Not that I'm competitive or anything. Oh, no, not at all. Yeah. Just, be, <laughs> yeah. just figure I'd, I'd just know, make it known. I didn't, um, you know, I'm political. I won't mention what well, the S. They can pick any S they want. And, but, yeah, uh, <laughs> I know. And, and when I first started, I said, somebody said, well, what is your goal for your new job? I said, to beat that community next door in every category. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, but the, um, the tests have changed. So we, we went from MCAS, which had taken years and years and years to develop, and the curriculum that went with it and the standards that accompanied it. And then there was the switch to PARC, which was a little confusing and perhaps was um, maybe fits and starts, and, uh, but we adapted. And then PARC has gone by the wayside, so now we're back to MCAS. That, interestingly, did not take that long. So while the other tests took many, many years to develop, this one was quite quick in its development. Uh, one of the things that we've done to make sure that our students will be very competitive is we have really focused on bringing technology into every classroom so that the students have a chance to work on computers for all the things that's appropriate to work on computers because the testing is going to go all computer-based. Mm -hmm. So students who have experience with computers, know what it's like to take a standardized test on a computer, will do better than students who see the computer and the test at the same time for the first time. Now, having said all of that, well, we're I'd like to add something to that. Just on a uh, within this within our curriculum and within the system, we are actually building our test to mirror the MCAS test. So it's not just this high stakes test at the end of the year. That's going to happen, but really every day in formative assessments and in unit tests and in um, projects and performance tasks, we're building those um, technology components in. So the kids are used to it. So there is not this fear of taking a test on a computer for the kids. So it's happening at the low level of that pyramid that is really where the teachers focus their, you know, their time and their efforts and their passions into their daily routines. And it's, and the testing is important and we have to remember that it's important and we are always happy when we do very well and are above average in that regard. But we also have to step back and, and remember that it, what our biggest obligation is good teaching and to leave the students with everything they need to know to be successful. So if our reading curriculum is strong, if we're teaching writing in a way that is strong and effective, if we're teaching our students how to think, it doesn't matter if they decide to change tomorrow and come up with a brand new test and name it something else. If we're doing our job right, we will be able to handle any test they throw at us. And if we look at Massachusetts as compared to the rest of the country, if Massachusetts is, is um, viewed as its own country, so we take the rest of the country and, and we compare Massachusetts with the rest of the world, we do as well as anyone in the world on the standardized tests that they apply across the international boundaries. So to say that any system is doing well in Massachusetts is actually to say it's doing very well in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to kind of keep the perspective that um, as a state we do quite well. And then within that state, we in Stoughton are doing quite well. Well, what I, I think I'm going to uh, have us go to our sponsors because we always want to say thank you to the folks who are doing that. But I also want to, because my next series of questions may not involve 
your great educators mm -hmm. to your right, and I wouldn't want them sit there just to be enamored by everything you and I are talking <laughs> about. So if if we discuss that and uh, there isn't a need for them to stay, I want to say thank you uh, for being on the program. If there are, you're free to stay and sit here and smile at the audience or speak on the issues, but I'll let the superintendent decide that. So. We're going to go. We'll discuss it offline, but in any event, we will now go to our sponsors. Thank you. Hi, it's Gary LaPierre, and the crew wants to thank mm, 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 Maxie's Delicatessen. That's at 117 Sharon Street in Stoughton. They're 781-341-1662. American Cancer Society. Yes, they're looking for volunteers, drive cancer patients to and from their treatments. 1-800-ACS-6662 or just go to www.cancer.org. Ilsa Marks Food Pantry in St. Anthony's Free Market, 2 Park Avenue in Stoughton. For more information, call Christine Gallagher. That's at 781-341-0611 or 781-341-0549. Meals on Wheels, just ask for Jessica. You'll find her at 781-344-8882, extension 2. Stoughton Penny Saver, our business is advertising your business, they tell us. 27 Rose Glen Street, Stoughton, 781-344-4833. Community Forum Showtimes in Stoughton. It's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 6 p.m., Monday at 8 p.m., Tuesday at 5 p.m., it's on Comcast Channel 9 and Verizon Channel 28. All comments and suggestions welcome. Contact us at communityforum1 at yahoo.com. Samaritans, they're at 41 West Street on the fourth floor in Boston, 02111. Their phone number is 617-536-2460. 24-hour helplines for Samaritans. And the number is 877-870-HOPE. That's 877-870-HOPE. 4673. Samaritans, you can find them at 800 252 teen. That's 252 8336. Or find them online at SamaritansHope.org. Get Fresh, Stoughton's own cooking show. New episodes coming soon. They're they, uh, are shown on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 28. Mondays at 5 30, Wednesday at 8 p.m. Thursdays at 9 a.m., Friday at 5 p.m., get fresh, watch the show. Hometown Business Show, Tuesdays at 11 a.m., Wednesdays at 5.30 p.m., Thursdays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 7 p.m. Exciting programs on there. You need to tune in on Comcast Channel 9 or Verizon Channel 28. Well, we're continuously building new program here on uh, SMAC. And we have a program now, We Are United. And that program is, uh, appears on Mondays at 5 p.m., Tuesdays at 9 a.m., Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m., Fridays at 11 a.m. And this is a program that wants to deal with the health of Stoughton. So certainly we want to have a healthy community. We want you to support this program. You can watch it on Comcast Channel 9, Verizon Channel 28. Monday Night Bingo at Ava, Ava Torah Congregation. I better pronounce it correctly because I know the rabbi would definitely come by to see me. The, they're located at 1179 Central Street in Stoughton. Doors open at 4.30 p.m. Game starts at 6.30 p.m. Bring your friends, bring your money, have a good time. And right, we're back. I'm going to do one that's not up there. Uh, I probably won't have to do it at the end of the program. And I want to bring to the audience's attention Another effort because not only do we uh, try to help folks with our food pantry and other types of activities uh, here, helping those who are in need, there is a program which I aired several months ago with Ralph and Ollie Greenberg, a program called Key for Hope. And it's really an easy program because all of us have those old locks that we don't use, the old keys that are to all, all these different places out where we previously lived, and they're just sitting around. This is a program where they'll melt the keys down and, and, uh, and then they distribute the monies uh, from that uh, throughout the community. So if you are interested, and maybe next time we will have it up on the board, uh, you can get in contact for Key for Hope at 800-949-5424 
or check them out at www.keyforhope.org. So now we're back. Thank you once again, uh, and uh, hopefully, uh, if you're just tuning in, you uh, I have an array of folks from the Stoughton Public Schools. Not only my good friend, the superintendent, but the principal of the Stoughton High School and various STEM coordinators uh, from uh, who are dealing with the middle school, high school, pre to K, and uh, and I'll just say quickly, the superintendent Margaret Rizzi, the principal of the Stoughton High School, Julie Miller. Terry Fleming, who is the 6 to 12 STEM coordinator. Uh, Jamie Holbig, who is the pre-DK STEM coordinator, dealing with our elementary folks. And Eileen Sprague, who is the pre-DK, uh, pre-K to 5 um, humanities coordinator. Uh, and so, and if you haven't tuned into the program, you need to definitely tune in because it tells you all the great things that are going on in our school system. So, we talked about the building, we talked about the curriculum, we talked about the academics. I've been told I can come by and work on the computer and the laptop with the young folks in, the, in pre, pre K. That's probably where I need to start. Uh, so, therefore, I want to do that. I'm at the age where I'd rather pick it up the phone and call somebody. But in any event, um, but let's talk about it. While we talk about that, you always hear that there are out, uh, extracurricular activities that after, after the academics stop, Schools are starting in the systems throughout this country where folks aren't getting sports, art, music, and other types of programs. So let's talk about what we have. I know about the Knights. I see it in the ice about the Chili's, and I know the volleyball team, and I pay attention. The volleyball team is doing great things. But let's tell our folks what we have, how they're doing. Madam Superintendent, you can direct the chorus. I'll, I'll just I'll start off, and then I'm going to hand it over to these folks who can tell you some of the individual things that are going on in high school, middle school, and, and elementary. Um, th we have traditional clubs and sports. Um, we have an extremely vibrant music program, and this is definitely thanks to town meeting and the supportive people in the town of Stoughton who have always made sure that insofar as they can provide resources to us, they provide them. Uh, so we are able to and have been able to maintain some of the things that actually make uh, school a rich, worthwhile experience. Um, you know, nobody would really choose to come to a school where all you did was math and English all day and math and English more. And uh, so uh, that entire experience, all of those things work together uh, to create a, a well-rounded person with a lot of interests, a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge about different things. So um, many of those things are just really down entirely to the fact that town meeting has been supporting us to maintain those things for years and, uh, and to be able to build on, on them. And some of the things we're doing in the elementary schools are specifically geared to also help students in the work that they do during the day. Um, but maybe we should start with the high school because that's the extracurricular picture that most people see when you know they, people, and actually it, it's, uh, very important to the community to come to the concerts, to come to the plays, to come to the sporting events because um, that's kind of a meaningful part of people's lives even if they are not in school or have a child in school. Sure, we do have quite a plethora of activities at the high school to choose from and I, it comes from first from Dr. Rizzi and then the district in the fact that we support this idea and this concept that those extracurriculars are a really important part of students' education um, to make that well-rounded piece. And like you mentioned, there are communities that don't have that, and we really do value it, and we're committed to it. And the fact that the town supports our budget each year shows that they do too. So we are blessed with a, a great a variety of things for students to be able to participate in after school. Um, our marching band, for example, uh, we do have a phenomenal music program. They just placed gold in uh, a competition two weekends ago. Um, they are a, a wonderful organization, well run, well organized marching band, along with Color Guard. Uh, we just began a winter Color Guard as well, so they are exploring that. They're growing that program, uh, so that program is flourishing as always. Uh, in terms of sports, we, we now have boys lacrosse on, 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 um, on the schedule and, and they are flourishing and girls hockey came on two years ago as a varsity sport so those programs are growing as well. 
Um, it's more so the other programs that you may not see so much or hear so much about that really do provide a lot of opportunity for our kids as well. So we have DECA, which is our business organization and club, which under the leadership of Linda Sicatelli is growing at leaps and bounds. We have a huge number of students who are participating in that organization. Each year they compete at states and, and nationals. They've just traveled to Anaheim, California last year to compete. Um, so they are really uh, learning a lot of great skills in terms of networking and people and how do you create products and how do you advertise and how do you work with each other and um, in groups. So there's lots of different skills that they're learning in that group. We have Destination Imagination, which is our STEAM organization. So it's not only science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, but the A comes from arts as well. So it incorporates all those aspects into a competition. Um, and so they put together, they build projects, they compete, uh, they go to Tennessee each year, or they have uh, up until this year so far, um, and they really get to learn a great deal of skills in those um, programs. And then we have some of our smaller clubs and activities. You know, we still have Students Against Destructive Decisions, SAD, Pair Mediation, which is a phenomenal program uh, run by Terry Krogan, where we train students to be able to help their peers mediate situations in peaceful, peaceful resolution, which are an truly um, important skills, especially in today's society, um, to be able to work with other individuals who are different from us and have different perspectives from us. So that program is a wonderful opportunity. We um, have brought on board a World of Difference, which is the Anti-Defamation Leagues program. Mm -hmm. We may talk about that later in the program uh, today, but uh, we just trained nearly 30 students who applied to be pair ambassadors of the program. They were trained in September. They're currently working on the training that they have um, learned and will be, pr be uh, bringing program to our students um, throughout the school year on, in terms of what they have learned in, in, in bringing our community together and, and valuing diversity. Um, we also have the play, uh, drama, and uh, musical productions are ongoing, and we have a play this weekend coming up. Mm -hmm. um, so please swing by the high school on Saturday, uh, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday afternoon. Um, we are really, uh, we have a, a whole slew I could go on for forever. I know. Uh, yeah. we have, I'm, I'm just and getting I don't exhausted. Want to forget I'm anyone. getting exhausted I just listening I to you. I know I forgot lots of people. Yeah. I, I yeah. forgot lots well, of people. What we're going to do yeah. is at least for the high school, it's encouraged our viewing audience to go online and look yes. at it. Definitely. Because even parents may not know the plethora of activities that you have. I was going to say, is there a chess club and things like that, mm -hmm. which I, when I'm sure that you have, to find out that either in terms of actually there's intramural situations as well, not mm -hmm. for those who may not be on the teams in terms of the varsity or JV teams, there's also mm -hmm. intramural activities for people to do. So go online, look at what the high school offers. And I would only add one other thing to that, that um, we often have students that we don't have a formal club that's put together, but they have an interest in something and they have other peers that have an interest in something. And they come to me and they make a proposal and we start offering that club. Last year we had epic poetry. So if there's an interest out there that your child has and they want to have a club, then we will put make every effort to be able to host that at the high school. So Sounds great. Well, Terry, uh, Jamie, or Eileen, or any of you ever did they add to that in terms of the activities that are going on at the middle and, uh, and at the pre and K? Sure. There are things that are happening at the middle school similar to the clubs that happen at the high school. There's robotics and uh, there are science clubs and math clubs and we had a huge scavenger hunt run by um, Marissa Vacasey in the middle school that um, used about 20 classrooms after school and had about 40 students running around solving math problems for fun after school. So uh, that's been a, a great time to experience. And then um, what I was going to say that one of the clubs that's happening at the high school that I walked into the other day is board games. So in a world of technology, mm -hmm. there's a club that meets for board games. And oh, you mean my, my like Monopoly? Monopoly? I can, I can, yeah, oh my, yes. so yeah. I can come that to that club. <laughs> and, yeah. and the kids are actually <laughs> looking for games. So if you have a game that oh, you would like to Monopoly, donate to them, Clue, they would love uh, it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do Twist and that was the after me. Not really a board. Yeah. <laughs> That's true, it's not a board yeah. game. <laughs> How about, uh, you know, with you? Uh, sure, we can Jamie. speak a little bit um, yeah. to the elementary. First of all, we have a colleague that is not with us right now, um, Linda Feeney. She 
organizes all of the enrichment programs for our students and they also have the ability to take a late bus home so that they can mm -hmm. get to the club mm -hmm. and then still be able to have a ride home so Dr. Rizzi and, and Mrs. Feeney have worked really hard on providing the transportation mm -hmm. aspect. There, it varies a little bit by school, but I will say that in Stoughton, our elementary teachers are very dedicated and they stay after school with these students, I'm sure at that high school and middle school as well, but we really would not be able to offer any of these enrichment programs if it weren't for the amazing and dedicated teachers that we have working in our school system. So there's many different um, STEM, there's um, Book readers clubs, theater, yes. there's book clubs, mm -hmm. it kind of is different um, based on which elementary school you're at mm -hmm. and if you have an interest as a teacher, Mrs. Feeney will work to put that enrichment program together for mm -hmm. you so she's she's amazing at that. I think a, a great piece about our um, after school opportunities as well is that um, if you're also looking for an academic opportunity at the elementary level, we have those as well. Um, but you're not limited to just academics. So if you're struggling academically, you are still able to explore some of those enrichment opportunities. So I think that is a difference that we have within our community and within our schools, that all of the opportunities are available. So if you're struggling academically, it's not like you're not able to participate in some of these STEM and coding opportunities. You're not held back as well. Um, so I think that's really important to mention. Um, and as Jamie said, we would not be able to do it without our dedicated staff. So we really appreciate all of the teachers who stay after and plan and coordinate um, these amazing opportunities for our students. Or come early, summer in the morning. Oh yes, <laughs> morning program Some well, students well. come early. Well, I can just simply yes. say uh, when I'm married to an educator, but more importantly, I, I just have the highest regard and respect for the work that you do. I just don't understand why society doesn't recognize that because we, ha we entrust our young people uh, uh, into your hands for a significant period of their, okay. of their day and of their lives as they yeah. matriculate from pre-K all the way through the college. And I don't understand why society has this imbalance in terms of salaries and things of that nature, but that may be a program for mm -hmm. another day that we will do. And so, that we do because we're coming down to the time, I have to glance at the clock here, because I, am, I just want to simply say I'm impressed with what I've heard today. Um, I thought I knew a lot, since the superintendent's a good friend, but I've, I've learned and I hope our viewing audience has learned the uh, the intricacies of the types of programs, activities, and skill sets that you have, and you know, and and that's a reason, Superintendent, why we support you at town meeting is mm -hmm. because we at least generally are aware of it. But hopefully, through this program, we'll be specific. But I want to touch upon one because we know there are other issues. But I want to on the diversity piece. But I want to talk about that population which is near and dear to me, and that's the persons with mental illness, special needs, mm -hmm. et cetera. How are we addressing that? We don't have a lot of time, so I may eclipse some of the conversation, but I at least want us to let the community know that we do care about this, and I know because we've had those conversations in the mm -hmm. past. So what is the community, uh, what is the school system doing with students with special needs and, and or mental illness? Uh, it's unfortunate, and. Uh, but I, I think it's safe to say that there, there is a trend that we are actually seeing more students amongst our population who have uh, issues with anxiety and depression. Uh, we have students that come into the system who, for any number of reasons, might have a history of trauma. Um, and those experiences can make it difficult for them to interact and difficult for them to, to learn, especially as the standards that we ask students to reach get higher and higher and you need a very um, high strong ability to be able to concentrate process information and if you're suffering from any mental or emotional um, issues or troubles then that can make it even harder for you to learn um, in stoughton there are a couple of things and one thing that i was very proud to inherit i didn't actually start this but i did come from a special ed background so i was very pleased to see uh, way back in the days of um, Joe Gibbons, who was uh, my predecessor and was superintendent for about 30 years, um, way ahead of his time in terms of the thinking about special ed students. And he was committed even when it was the, the common practice to send students away if they had any issues that might make them other than typical. And Mr. Gibbons was like, absolutely no, we are keeping everyone in our community that we can. 
And so Stoughton had a history of doing that even before it became known that that was best practice. Uh, so we've been very proud to continue that. We have uh, separate and sub-separate programs in all of our schools for students mm -hmm. with uh, cognitive impairments, for students with emotional challenges, for students with behavioral challenges, for students who might have uh, autism spectrum issues. So we have designed programs that can embrace kids who um, might not be able to function without supports in just a general ed environment. But we are also spending a lot of our professional development time training the teachers in the general ed classroom who don't, in the course of their teacher training, learn, well, how do you identify if a student is responding to you because of anxiety? How do you interpret if someone may have an issue that they need some kind of um, counseling or mental health support? So they don't get that as part of their regular training. And so we're trying now to just open up the minds of teachers and when they look at students' behavior to be able to say, oh, well, maybe the student is not just trying to give me a miserable day. Maybe they're responding in an oppositional fashion because they are terrified of this task in front of them. Mm -hmm. So um, we're doing a lot of PD around those issues. Uh, we have always, through the very bad times, and you know, because we were, we were in town government at the time when the budgets were bad. But we're going to have to continue bad. the details in okay. another program. There you go. Okay. Because I want to be yeah. able to end it in a way which is appropriate. My mother always tells me to say thank you when you've had such great folks in here. So I want to say thank you to you, Superintendent Rizzi, to you, Principal Miller, to you, STEM Coordinator Fleming, STEM Coordinator uh, Holbig, and uh, Humanities Coordinator Sprague. I want to say thank you. This has been a most delightful program for me, an informative program for me, and hopefully for the viewing audience. I ask that the viewing audience tune in watch this program on a community forum because it is has definitely been educational enlightening and i know there's some topics that we weren't able to cover you know superintendent you're always welcome to come back and all of you uh, you know you may want to take a filming of me in that class with the, yeah. uh, you, know, the you know i may have to work with the legos with your students there as well but um, uh, all of you are impressive i applaud the work that you do dealing with our young people and i wish you the best and Thank we'll you. be over there for the ground uh, for the for the opening, not the groundbreaking. Right. We already had that, but the opening of ribbons cutting for the high school. Absolutely. So again, thank all of you for being here today. Thank, thank, you. thank you.